would be an Hi, I'm Marcus and I play the shakuhachi and I play taiko. However, in addition to playing shakuhachi and taiko, I also play this instrument. This is a shinobue and in particular I picked up the shinobue to play this for my taiko group, for Mugenkyo. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of information about shinobue in English and all that I know about the instrument I really picked up along the way as the need arose for playing for my taiko group. I'm quite often contacted by taiko players who want to learn how to add some shinobue playing for their taiko group. So even though I don't have a formal training in Shinobue, um, I've accumulated some practice, of course, over the years, um, and I can also transfer a lot of what I learn on Shakuhachi to Shinobue. So even though I'm not a trained Shinobue player, I'm always happy to pass on what I know about the instrument. Um, and as there are no formal schools on Shinobue, as there are for Shakuhachi or for many other traditional Japanese instruments, um, I feel quite free to just pass on what I know, um, being fully aware that my knowledge is very patchy. So starting from the instrument itself, shinobu are made from shinodake or more precisely meidake. It is a form of bamboo, which is quite frequent, I think. Um, and it's a horizontally blown flute uh, with a very simple basic construction. So basically this is just a piece of bamboo. This is a bamboo stalk between two nodes. Um, so unlike the shakuhachi, <laughs> if you saw my shakuhachi video, um, there are no, no nodes of the bamboo stalk uh, that are being used for making a shinobue. This is a very simple type of construction. Um, this is just chopped off, then it's hollowed out inside to create the bore for the flute. And then just some holes are drilled into it. Uh, one for blowing into, the utaguchi, the blowing edge, the blowing hole, and then the finger holes. And that's pretty much it. So construction-wise, at least from the basics, it's quite a simple instrument. Then uh, there is uh, lacquer added, uh, in particular inside the bore, to improve the playability and the sound of the instrument. And then sometimes, although I don't have any flutes uh, myself that are made this way, you have some uh, lacquer on the outside as well. But this is more for cosmetic reasons. Also, I think to improve the durability of the instrument a bit. A further distinction in the construction is how many bindings there are on the flute, uh, because the more bindings there are on the flute, the more expensive the flute, because it involves more labor, obviously. Um, and these bindings, are, the main purpose of these bindings is to prevent the bamboo from cracking. So there are three types of bindings that are being used for shinobue. One is having no bindings. Uh, then uh, the top and the bottom, so the top and the bottom, this is called tenchi, uh, heaven and earth <laughs> bindings. And then uh, you also have sotomaki, uh, which is having many bindings along the flute, which you also see on many other types of uh, Japanese traverse flutes. But for shinobue, it's not necessarily very common to do that. Even though shinobue are not as expensive as shakuhachi by a long shot, um, you pay at least 100 euros for a usable instrument that is made of bamboo. So in particular for beginners, there have been flutes made of other materials like uh, plastic flutes, for example. And more recently, there are compound materials as well from uh, bamboo scraps and uh, glass fiber, for example, that also make for quite a durable instrument. However, in particular, the plastic flutes are a bit difficult to play, so for beginners, they may not actually be the best choice. To set the shinobue a bit in context, um, this is pretty much a piccolo flute. This is a so-called number eight flute, so this is tuned in C, and this is actually the same bass pitch as you have for your favorite instrument for the soprano recorder. This is also, the bass note is also a C, so um, let's see if I can make a note on the recorder. Not very expertly played, but this is the bass note of a soprano recorder. And the bass note of this shinobue is the same pitch. Playing wise, as far as I know, it's really the closest to the western flute, the silver flute. Um, this is also a traverse flute and you have an open blowing edge here, uh, which is the same as you have on the western flute. Uh, technique wise, it's actually a bit different that you play the shinobue, but if you play 
the Western flute, it will be pretty easy to get a good sound out of the shinobue pretty quickly. What is also important for the shinobue is that, like the shakuhachi, where you have um, a medikari system where you can bend the pitch, without using any fingering, you can do the same for the shinobue, but not quite as much, but you can bend the tone as well. And because this is an instrument that is made from a natural material, uh, getting the tuning really 100% spot on is very difficult or maybe even impossible. I don't know. I don't know that much about Shinobu construction, but to adjust the pitch for certain notes that are not quite in tune, you have to use this Medi and Kadi system. So basically turning the flute a bit inside or out. The Shinobu really originated in Japanese festival music, so they were played on Matsuris a lot. And um, initially the construction was even more simple than the flute that I have here, because initially actually just all the holes were the same size and the same distance from each other. Those are called Hayashi flute or festival flutes. The problem, if you like, with these flutes is that no two flutes have the same scale, so playing together with multiple flutes is actually quite difficult or requires a certain kind of taste. However, once the flutes were being used with other musical instruments or even with other shinobue, it became really necessary to develop a tuning for this. So most modern shinobue um, are uta flutes or song flutes or also called utabue. And they are quite easily distinguishable from the Hayashi flutes because some of the finger holes have quite different sizes and also the distance. As you can see, this distance here is quite narrow, whereas these ones are a bit further apart. And this is a sign that this is an Uta flute, so this is tuned to a Western scale. But as I said earlier, the Shinobu is not affiliated with any large schools or big lineages, so there is no particular scale that Shinobu would be tuned to, as you would have in Shakuhachi. There are quite different notions of how a Shakuhachi should be tuned or not be tuned. Um, and for Shinobu, this doesn't really exist. So typically you just have flutes that are tuned to a Western scale. But because the Shinobu is made from a natural material, if you want to buy a Shinobu, it's really a good idea to try before you buy <laughs> or buy a flute from a well-known maker where you can be sure that the flute is in tune and that it will be easily playable for you. As I said, this is a so-called number eight flute. So um, Shinobu come in different lengths. So I only have very few Shinobu. So um, as you can see, <laughs> these are all of different lengths and um, they all have a different bass pitch. So the one that I've been showing you so far is the so-called number eight flute. This can be seen on the kanji eight that is written here um, at the end. And this means this is tuned to a C pitch, as I already said. So the bass note is a C. This here is a number six flute, as you can see kanji number six. So this is B flat, the bass note is a B flat. Yeah, all holds closed, fingering is the same, but it's a B flat. And then this one here, this is also a very nice flute. This is a number three flute. Um, I like it because, um, as I said, basically shinobu are like piccolo flutes, so they can be really shrill. Um, and longer flutes have a more mellow tone, um, as is the same for all types of flutes, but longer, toads, uh, longer flutes have a more mellow tone. So this number three flute. The bass note here is a G. Basically, maybe you already discovered the system. Uh, this means that each number up or down is a half step in the Western scale up or down. So number eight, is a C flute, number seven, which I don't have, is a B flute, number six is a B flat, uh, number five would be an A flute, and so on and so on. So this means number three flute is a G flute. The range of a Shinobue is three octaves, pretty much. Um, it depends a bit on how you count. <laughs> but uh, the bass note here, as I said, of the flute, or the flute's tuned to a C major scale,
But you may have noticed that I'm keeping my pinky up and there still is a hole. So if I close this hole as well, I get an even lower note and this is an A. And as it happens, the highest note that I can produce on this instrument is also an A, three octaves higher. So this is the first octave. Second octave. And then a few more notes. That one always gives me trouble. And that's also a pretty good indication that my skills on the Shinobu are, are a bit limited. But the highest note is also an A, uh, the same as the lowest one that I produced. Okay, the highest note is quite painful to the ear. Ah, okay. The numbers for the Shinobu go from 1 to 12, so if a number 3 is a G flute, then the number 1 flute is an F flute, and correspondingly a number 12 flute would be an... would be... A, and correspondingly the number 12 flute would be an E flute. Beginners usually start with um, a number 8 flute or a number 6 flute. Um, I think the number 6 flute is a bit easier because it's a bit bigger, so it's a bit easier to produce a good tone. Some teachers prefer to use a number 8 flute because it's in a C major scale, and a C major scale is a very common scale and it's easy to understand, so I think that's why many teachers like a number 8 flute. I, I always recommend starting with a number 6 because it's just a bit easier to play. And this is maybe also then a good opportunity, I forgot in the introduction, to say uh, that if you would like to learn a bit of Shinobue, um, I'm available for lessons as well. Um, as I've already pointed out, I'm a trained shakuhachi teacher. Um, Shinobue I acquired myself, but I'm very happy to pass this on to you because it's just difficult in Europe or even in the US, I think, to find uh, teachers for Shinobue. As I've just demonstrated, this flute, let's stick with the number eight flute, is tuned in a C major scale. And if you just play, if you just open the holes, as I just did, you just get the major scale. But you also have this Medicati system here, which means you can bend the notes. So you can actually produce any pitch on a Shinobue. And you can combine this with half holing, where you only partly close one of the holes. And so on. Um, so this means by using this half holding technique and by using a bit of Medicari, you can actually produce any note on the chromatic scale or even microtones in between. I'd like to finish this very, very general broad overview of the Shinobui by um, having a quick look at the notation. Um, there are lots of scores that are written in Western notation. But traditionally, Japanese music is not notated for the pitch, but for the fingering or for the technique that you need to use on the instrument. And so the notation that really developed for the Shinobui is one where it's indicated uh, basically how many holes on the instrument are open. So for example, if you look um, at the beginning um, of this piece here, Sakura Sakura, the very famous Japanese song, um, it starts with two, two, three. Okay, and then there is this line here that indicates that you hold this note for an additional beat. And then again, two, two, three. And you have a line here next to these numbers that indicates those are, those are eighth notes. So basically this would be a quarter note, quarter note, a half note, and then these would be, these would be eighth notes. So it's basically a combination of the rhythmic notation from Western notation, from staff notation, and these fingerings, okay? The main difference that this causes is that um, it's difficult to use these scores for anything different than for the instrument for which they are written. On the other hand, it makes it very easy to transpose because if I, again, start with the number eight root and I start, I play this first line of Sakura Sakura, I just 
play 2 2 3 2 2 3 yeah so this is just moving this one finger here this is on the c flute now i want to transpose it one whole step down one whole note down the only thing i have to do is that i change the flute everything else stays the same same melody same fingering but one whole note, oh, one whole note down. Okay, so one note flatter than uh, on the number eight flute or on my number three flute. So, which system is better? I don't know. Um, I got used to the Japanese notation for Shinobue. I find it very convenient having the fingerings explicitly notated on, on paper. Uh, that makes it very easy for me to play. Of course, if you want to take a Shinobue notation, put it on a piano and play it, that requires some extra skill. <laughs> Nothing that you couldn't figure out or learn, of course, but um, it's not quite as straightforward. And I think it's mainly for that reason that much of Shinobue notation actually uses a Western staff notation and then uses the Japanese notation underneath or on top to indicate the fingering, which you have in, which you have as annotation in many Western scores as well for a particular instrument that tell you which fingers to use on a piano, for example, or on a flute or a violin. So it's, it's pretty much the same idea behind that. Okay, so much for my whirlwind bird's eye, very high up altitude view of the Shinobui. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. If there are people interested in the Shinobui, um, as I said, um, so I, I do teach a bit Shinobui, I, I pass on what I know. Again, I don't claim that I'm a trained Shinobui player because I'm not. Uh, you can learn Shakuachi from me and I'm happy to pass on my Shinobui knowledge to you as well if you like. But this is more the idea of a service because uh, it's, as I said, it's really difficult finding Shinobui instruction in, in the West. If that's of interest to you, um, just uh, get in touch with me. Um, I'm always happy to help you out. Um, also, it doesn't have to be a formal teaching. Um, if you if you just like some information, please just get in touch. I'm always happy to help out. Okay, and if you find this video interesting and would like to see more Shinobue videos, please let me know in the comments or send me a message and I'll be happy to oblige. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.